ladies and gentlemen, rapping Fote. I remember in 94, and this song, Players Club, came out. Me and my homies, we tied it in the club. We chop a lot of game, that's how we do it at the Players Club. There was some controversy, shit, just a few years ago off that song. Got a hoe named Real the Real. She got a buddy named SB12. Now you know the deal. I got a shorty named Texas Sin. She got a buddy named Yo JB. And now you know the deal. Tupac was in there with Richie Rich. And they were having some conflict. And what I did is I went inside and broke that up to make sure they safely got across the bridge. Biggie Smalls was in the Bay Area coming up out of a radio station. And somebody was trying to take his chain. And the word got out to the East Coast while I was on stage performing. Oh, shit. There was a big old man. It was a huddle of individuals trying to jump on stage and get him, you know, a treach from Naughty by Nature grabbing the mic and calming him down. That I had that white tape. And when I heard I am the rapper that they call Fote, I'm going to tell you like my homie Short Dog would say, hoes in the world trying to play it sweet, know the damn hoes that they want to freak. When I heard that shit, I was yeah. like, Jesus Christ, this is the dopest voice that I've ever heard. Tell me about um, um, hooking up with, with Too Short and um, how that song came about and what you remember about that specific song. Well, I was hooked up with a, with a, with a guy named Randy Austin at first. It was Randy Austin. He was, there was a, uh, there's a girl named Ray that used to stay in the complex that I stayed in in San Francisco, and she would always hear me rapping and making songs and etc. Uh, after that, she was like, "You know what? I need to hook you up with Too Short. You know, he's a good. I uh, know his manager, Randy Austin. And they come there starting what's called a Dangerous Crew. So, you know, I, we really we met at the Solar System at Hunters Point. I opened up a show for him. He came back and was like, "Was that you? We rocked the crowd like that." I was like, "Yeah, that was me." So then they came to pick me up and drop a Ritz and my film on. We drove over to Oakland and started collaborating with Spice One and collaborated and started the Dangerous Crew. From that point on, man, I was just popping up over Redenbacher. Did you guys record that song like in, in, a, in a house or in a studio? Or? Yeah, right, in a, in a corner house on Myrtle Street in Oakland. Mm. Yeah. Damn, mm -hmm. yeah, that, that was a dope ass tape. My homeboy, my Mexican homie, Ramito, had that shit and this is right when when i fell in love with hip-hop was that tape and then shortly after i discovered nwa and and you're definitely you've been there since my my, my hip-hop journey began homie um, so like i said this is a fucking pleasure um i know shortly yeah. after you served some time in jail you know on some drug charges um for whatever um but i, I remember around 94 i want to i'm sorry i'm bouncing all over the place but i remember in 94 and this song players club came out and i was like right. i haven't heard and, and no i'm in la and we didn't have the internet and back then and blah 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 and stuff like that so yeah. i hadn't heard your voice until then and the first thing i said was holy shit it's the dude from don't fight the feeling i i and, and then once again it was it was it was a done deal and you, you you got me again on that song um 1994 some say that was one of if not the greatest year you know for hip-hop albums you know what i'm saying we had nas outcast yeah, Red Man, right, it was. what was your mentality mm -hmm. releasing an album around that time? Well, basically, I was fresh out. From, I was fresh out from doing some time. With my homeboy Fly, he had came and picked me up. He introduced me to his brother Frankie J. Yeah, and we did. We got in the studio and just started collaborating, and stacking tracks and stacking tracks up. And I, I always wanted to come with something that well, we could party to and not. Wouldn't have to be any, any guns and, and violence and etc. I started thinking something real smooth. And a lot of people would always talk about Frisco having, you know, gays and etc. And I feel like they, you know, it's a free world. They all over, you know, they all over the world. But let me give them, let me paint a picture of what, what goes on deep, deep in the heart of San Francisco. And that was like how I came with that concept, the Players Club. It took off. Hey, hey uh, uh, can I ask a question real quick? Of course, go for it. It's yeah. my producer, Dre. So, so um, for, if, for the younger generation, it frustrates me because I hear a lot of them saying Players Club and they and, and they contribute that to Ice Cube and it annoys the crap out of me because I'm like, Rapping Forte did the Players Club song way before Ice Cube did the movie and his, and his single. Did you ever get anything yeah. like that from the younger generation? Because I know the older generation yeah, knows what's I up. Did. Yeah, I got that a lot. You know what I'm saying? They confused it with the movie, you know, just the title, the title itself, you know what I mean? But, uh, you know, it's just, uh, I look at it like with, uh, if there was an idea that Ice Cube that got for me, I'm looking at it like, you know, a compliment, the same token, you know what I mean? Yeah. Basically. Yeah. That's all that's humble, man. Good word. Now, now, am I tripping or did you guys, did you go on, T uh, on tour with TLC? 
Yeah, I was on tour with TLC. Mm, tell me about uh, that. Mary J. Blige was, I mean, it was out of this world. It was big. It was basically planted a seed. It was a seed being planted and it blossomed. Mm. It was a beautiful thing, you know, meet the left eye, make sure you rest in peace. It was a very, very prolific, beautiful person. Yeah. You know, and it, it just it motivated me. It motivated me to keep pushing, keep pushing forward, keep the name popping. Yeah. You know, that's what that was what my mission. That's what I had to do. Mm-hmm. Keep, to kick the doors wide open for you know, up and coming artists and first call. Yeah, what was Lisa Left Eye Lopez like? She's hella cool, very humble. She, I mean, she, she would be backstage on the skates, skating yeah. backstage, having a call. <laughs> it's great. You see, she was, she was very talented. Mm-hmm. People person Biggest crush on her I had the biggest crush On that woman man <laughs> May she rest in peace yeah. Real talk Besides the Bay Obviously um, What other part of the country uh, Showed you The most love The most love I would honestly Have to say uh, in Albuquerque They had Rapping for Take A Out there A parade what? And some other things Going on Yeah It was big <laughs> It was big It was big, it was big. Damn. Show me love all over, though. Let me go. Show fun. me love all over. Yeah, yeah. You gave you, you never gave off that um that that gangster vibe. It was always that pimp player. You you'd be cool as fuck to talk to, you know, hang out yeah. with, smoke something with, drink something with. That's the type of vibe I always got with you. And every time I hear Players Club, it's it's a good vibe song. It doesn't make you want right. to fight. It doesn't make you want to. It makes no, you want to get a bitch and, and and dance. Besides the Bay, obviously. Um, what other part of the country uh, showed you the most love? Most love. I would honestly have to say, uh, I think Albuquerque, they had rapping for Take Day out there. A parade what? and some other things going on. Yeah, it was big. <laughs> it was big. It was big. Damn. Show me love all over, though. Let me go. Show me love all over. Yeah, yeah. You, gave, you, you never gave off that. Um... That, that gangster vibe It was always that pimp player you, You'd be cool as fuck to talk to You know, hang out yeah. with Smoke something with Drink something with That's the type of vibe I always got with you And every time I hear Players Club It's, it's a good vibe song It doesn't make you want right. to fight It doesn't make you want to It makes oh, you want to get a bitch and, and, and dance So get I love that <laughs> Speak, <laughs> Speaking of that song Because um, there was some controversy Shit, just a few years ago Off that song um, With, of course, with Drake um, Explain that whole Drake situation um, where he he did he you know took your flow and anybody who knows hip hop knew as soon as he started that flow that's rapid forte. Um, can you give us an idea of how that happened and what what, what the outcome came? Well, basically, uh, it's, it hasn't come to a halt. It hasn't come to a super in concrete re- um, end result right now. But it was you know it was basically like a copyright infringement situation to where I'm still dotting eyes and crossing T's on it. I really don't want to speak on it too much. It's yeah. going you know. We speak on it too much, but at the end of the day, at every at the end of every tunnel is a big old pot of gold. Every 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 rainbow is a big old pot of gold. Every dark tunnel is some daylight. So, yeah, you know, just uh, yeah, we don't, we don't have to get into it to it at all. But, yeah, um, I'm assuming that you didn't even know that he was going to do that. That it was a shock to you. Just no, like it, was. Okay. it shocked me. It yeah. really did. Yeah. Like wow. Uh, yeah. Yeah. All right. Cool. Well, shit. Hopefully, it all works out, my man. Um, yeah. How did you meet Ann Banks? Uh, and thanks to uh, to too too short, mm. too too short to the Dangerous Crew. Okay, we were at a, at a group called the Dangerous Crew, and uh, I moved out to Antioch. And Banks stayed right around the corner with a nice studio in there, so I was hop skipping, jump away from what I like to do the best. We just put our heads together, came with the TWDY, the whole damn yay package yeah, with Captain right. Save All, play this holiday. Yes, sir. yeah, buddy. Every day mm-hmm. the play is played. That was okay. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, we're gonna. Was on <laughs> that was my first time being on Soul Train. That was big. I bet you I recorded that, that shit on my VHS too. Yeah, right. Okay. <laughs> That's dope as hell, man. Um, so yeah, I want to. Like I said, I kind of want to bounce around a bit. But one person that I do want to talk about, because um, you were on one of the dopest songs on his his double album. Um, how did the whole thing with you? First of all, how did you and Tupac meet, and and how did the um, only Josh God Can Judge Me song come about? Well, we had met at a place called The Stone in San Francisco on Broadway Street. And there was some conflict going on in there. Tupac was in there with Richie Rich. And they were having some conflict. And what I did is I went inside and broke that up and made sure they safely got across the bridge. Oh, 
okay. You know, I thought that was only right that I did that. But, uh, can you can you stop right there? I really quick because sorry to cut you off. I mm-hmm. want you to continue. But RBL uh, Black Sea mentioned um, that there was a situation where Pac um, got quote unquote jumped by some of JT and the bigger figure and his homies. Is that the same situation? Um, I it, think it's, it's it's kind of related, but um, I don't know the specifics about who was jumping him. I just met one to make sure he was safe. I'm yeah, yeah. He was in the safety. Okay. But yeah, it was probably related to the same situation, you know. So I'll be sometimes, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah. But I made sure he got up out of there, and uh, you know, was you know, thank me for that. And Pac would be locked up, and I would be out free, and. I would be locked up and Pac would be free and we finally were out at the same time. We sipped up with shit at night and we just locked up like pit bulls and got up in the studio and just, just made some magic, put it together and only God can judge me. It was like, yeah. man, big. What was it like being in the studio with him? Oh, man, it was like, I was like a kid in a candy store, you know what I mean? Yeah. It was big. Yeah. It was very smart, very prolific individual. Yeah. I didn't even know the song was going to make the album, but it did. No. Yeah. It's good. Pac, I feel you. He's serving the moment, really. He's serving the novella. And to say a play, hey, Mark, I'm about to kill you. you. That's you a ridiculous I mean? verse, I'm man. Just, he's just speaking from the heart, basically. Yeah. That's all. Obviously, you were you were around when the whole and I hate using this 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 term, but it's what the media created, um, the whole East Coast West Coast you know uh, situation where we unfortunately lost. Right, I was around. Yeah, yeah, you were. Yeah, I was around yeah you were there. Tell me, take me back to that that time. You know, I want to. I want to. It was a time. Feeling. It was. A, you, I remember you brought it on TLC. It was a time that we had a show with TLC and Tretch from Naughty by Nature at an army base out in Jersey. And what ended up happening was, I think Biggie Smalls was in the Bay Area coming up out of a radio station and somebody was trying to take his chain and word got out to the East Coast while I was on stage performing. Oh, shit. It was a big old, man, it was a huddle and the bitch was trying to jump on stage and get him, you know, from the trash from Naughty by Nature, grabbing the mic and calming him down, letting him know that's the problem right now today with black on black crime, et cetera. This is a good brother right here. I play, I'll be around, calm him down and chunk. Got the hell up out of there. <laughs> <laughs> what time? Yeah. Yeah. God damn! But yeah, tell me, yeah, talk talk to me about just the, the environment, um, and, and and just how how everyone felt, and more importantly, like, did you feel unsafe? You know, other than that situation, uh, performing in any other places? Yeah, I did. I did because of you know everything that was going on, and how it was all in the media and etc. Mm-hmm. You know, there ain't no place like home. But it was a lot of individuals that I did tap in with that were really cool from the East Coast, like me and Method Man. And, and Dr. Spock, you know, Red Man, they met the birthdays on the same day. Good, heavy D, and a lot of individuals like um, Ray May, rest in peace, Google, we were signed to the same label. Um, I, I got love and excited for the East Coast. It's just, uh, I'm, I'm glad that simmered down more. We can put our heads together and make a gangster gumbo instead of all the hatred and et cetera, because we are we're better together, you know what I mean? Yeah, for real, man. Did you ever get a chance to meet Biggie? Yeah, I did oh. at the awards. Oh. I was nominated for MTV Best Rap Video, and I met him in the bathroom with Puffy. <laughs> it was good. <laughs> nice, nice. Uh, what do you remember about that time? Was it, or was it just a meeting and then peace? You're out. Yeah, it was just peace. I'm out. What's up? He recognized me. I recognized him. What's yeah. up? Peace. I was out. I was out of there. Mm-hmm. That's mm-hmm. dope, dude. Tell us about um. Yeah. Tell us about New Tribe Records. Not too many people know about them um give what was it like being signed to them and you know how that outcome came about well and also a new tribe comes in with a new tribe for a short period of time because emi had closed their label down and i still had all them out new tribe was pretty hard working with them because it seemed like they were kind of like hating to me you know, they weren't they weren't putting paint where it ain't been doing you know everything that could be done as far as pushing you know pushing the product and uh, get material and, and et cetera about it there. So my experience with New Tribe, I, wasn't, I really wasn't feeling New Tribe. I wasn't. I was ready to exercise my independency. Yeah, yeah. What, what, have, what ever happened with that situation with you and Yuck Mouth? Oh, that's my guy right there, Yuck Mouth. We, we, we sat down and we talked and 
understood where he was coming from. He understood where I was coming from. We bygones be bygones. We're the best of friends right now. You know what I mean? Was it just a misunderstanding type shit? Or? That's all it was. Talking down on a player. You know, yeah, never yeah. talk down on a player. Mm -hmm. That was a song with the, that was also a song with uh with uh Breed, right? Breed and Too Short. Right, with the yeah, May Rest in Peace, yeah. Breed yeah. and Too Short. Yeah, shout out Detroit, man. Yeah, dude. Right. What, tell us about MC Breed, man. He doesn't get much love he hasn't got much love on my show. MC Breed with the God of Earth kind of God, man, for real. But drink uh heavy drinking like to drink a lot, but now I'm very talented in the bitch who always did like his style. You always put a little pain where it ain't put the right goo on the pasta. You know what I mean? When it comes to music. Very talented, brother, man. Yeah, yeah. Very down to earth, brother. Another dope ass voice. Another dope ass voice. Exactly. Right um, what about E40? Did you, uh, what's your relationship like with him or what was it like back then? Oh, that's my guy. That's my guy. Another whole family. Yeah. Like, we all grew together in the music industry and et cetera. Any good E40 40 stories? He's my, he's my top five, so I got to hear a good E40 story if you have one. What's the what's the biggest story story that I have? Is, uh, um, oh yeah, we are. Uh, I like the fact that we had gone with KML a few radio stations, and we had an all star, uh, an all star baseball game in Oakland at the, uh, the Coliseum there in Oakland. That was uh, that was real, real, real big. But um, it's another story. Um, me and my cousin Sugar Free. On my birthday, when I'm yeah. the E40s, and I call myself trying to, you know, drink and hang, hang with him and drinking, and then I, I just couldn't do it. I thought I just couldn't do it. I remember passing out while I was still in the studio, passed out right there at the house. That's crazy. <laughs> you talking about Sugar Free from Pomona? Yeah, Sugar, Sugar Free the Free. pimp. Oh man, yeah, that's mm -hmm. the guy, dude. Why you bullshit? Is it is that your is that your real cousin or is that just so much love that that's you call each other cousins? Cousin. What? That's my cousin. I never yeah. knew that. Mm -hmm. oh, okay, no shit, yeah. dude. Another one yeah. in my top five. I'm keeping it real. Sugar Free is up there with E40 in my books as one of the dopest. I live five minutes from Pomona. Um, what? What okay. is? Um, well, give me a good Sugar Free story, please, if you have something. Oh, I'm real good Sugar Free. Or just yeah, just tell me about the dude. Being around him, his energy. You know what I'm saying? His energy. It's like wow. One of the most talented individuals that I've ever worked with, you know what I'm saying? They come with those one-liners all the time. How you cracking up, man? Mm. Really cracking up, man. S slide and down the side of razor blades into a pool of piss, and if you do, you shut up. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he keeps a real pluralistic, too, you know what I mean? He really oh, does. I got to give him that. And you know what? That, kinda, yeah, that makes sense because you guys both have that, you know what I'm saying, the same type of mentality. Even, even though he's a little hyper than you, you guys have that same kind of, I guess, pen player vibe. So it all starts to make sense. But yeah, keep going. I'm sorry. Tell me about the pimp. Man, the pimp is a, is a, is another side to him, dog. Family man, he a cook. Mm. He loved cooking greens and stuff too. You know what I mean? Green, cornbread, hot water, cornbread, and etc. He said, I mean, he, 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 he a comedian, man. He had him wrong, cracking up like, just about everything he does. But uh, that's my guy, though, for real. Yeah, yeah. You know, we, that's my guy. That's my guy right there. So, we so came out to the Bay Area and tapped him in with about an individual. So he did the same with me in LA. He's been keeping like a gangster combo ever since. Because I was a big No Limit fan. If you looked at my CD case back in like 96 to 99 or whatever, my whole 80% of my CD case was something out of No Limit. And I was listening to Make Him Say Uh one day. And I was like, wow, I wonder why Rap Forte. Yeah, I was like, why is yeah. I just how, how did that whole thing come about? Uh, that, was, that was something that Pete thought about. He was like, well, I need, I need you on the intro of the song right here. So he, could, he picked up the phone and I just, we just did that. You know, it was a little common that we just put in an intro. I didn't even know he was going to put it on the album, but he did, though. So were you, got, cool. were you there in the studio with him? Yeah, I was in oh, the studio God, with him. Man. Yeah. Such a Still genius. That dude's a genius. <laughs> that dude's a genius, man. All right, yeah. My God. Shouts out to Pete. Say that again. I said, shouts out to Master P and yeah, family. Man. Oh man, That's my God. God. How did you guys uh, connect? We connect to the to the homeboy um, Frankie J, or manager Frankie J. Okay. And we tapped in and did the uh, Bad Boys One, uh, West Coast Bad Boys One, and West Coast Bad Boys Two, and then he done, he moved it on down to the South. You know, kept it pushing, doing yeah. his thing. Yeah, because he he started kind of in in Richmond, right? 
right in Richmond, California, out in the Bay Area. Yeah. Uh, did, did you guys ever go to that that record store? Um. Yeah, I went there. I went there two yeah. times. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Top ten one. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Should we got about like about eight to ten more minutes, man? I'm just gonna ask you, you know, a few few names and and you give me the first thing that comes to your head, or if you have a good little story, I would I would love to hear it. Um, okay. Another one, the East Bay Gangster, Spice One. Oh, that's my guy right there. Me and him, we go back. We go back like Crocus Sacks. That's my guy. We, uh, me and Spice One first met on on the Myr- on Myrtle Street where I tell you we started the Dangerous Crew with yeah. uh, Two Short. It was like a rap contest with a with a huddle of individuals. And at the end of the day, when all the smoke cleared, me and Spice One was still standing. So you know, Two Short made us a part of the Dangerous Crew. And we've been good ever since, you know what I mean? Tapping in, that's my guy. I want to give a shout out to him, tell him I love what he's doing. I'm proud of him. Congratulations on everything he's doing. That's my guy, Spice. That's dope, that's dope. What about San mm-hmm. Quinn, another Bay Area legend? Oh, yeah, that's nephew. I'm really proud of San Quinn. Very prolific. Very prolific. San Quinn, I, I, I would have signed San Quinn at the time if I had the money to do so when I first started off rapping. JT, the bigger figure, picked him up and put him on his leg when they could take that. He was more independent than I was at the time I was signed with EMI. But I want to thank Quinn for what he's doing and congratulate him on what he's doing as well. That's my guy. Yeah, yeah. What about Messi Marv? I'm in all the way with that shit, nigga. I smoke. Coke, nigga, two coke, nigga, all this you know. Since 11 years old, I've been fucking with cocaine. It's been a feel more tradition. Nigga, to smoke some coke, nigga. I smoke chewy like a motherfucking nut. Nigga, I just blew a coke cloud, nigga. Messy, messy is mess, got a messy. You know what I mean? But, uh, <laughs> messy but he messy. does his thing. He, he puts pain where it ain't, you know what I'm saying? Those are, he puts pain where it ain't, uh, to each his own, you know. Just wish him all the best and tell him, you know, want to stay focused on the up and coming. You know, try to stay out of harm's way and be weirdos, basically. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of fucking weirdos out there. So I would love to get your take on the whole uh, Nipsey Hussle thing and him getting shot uh, by someone who was from his own set. Um, what were you doing when you heard about it? How did you feel? Because it was surreal to me. I'm, it's still surreal to me as I'm even talking to you right, right. now. But um, how are you feeling right now about that whole situation? Well, it has me kind of down because, you know, I knew him and we did shows and et cetera together. Really? And I want to, you know, send my condolences to his family and et cetera. It was, man, it was sad. It was, it was a real sad situation, a real cold situation. And it reminds me how hopefully it opened up a lot of people's eyes and see what's going on. Sometimes your worst enemy could be right there, right next to you. So, yeah. Gotta be sheep and wolf clothing sometimes, you know. It's just, it's gotta keep God first and stay prayed out there, you know. Yeah, and, and and I want to ask you when you were at, at the height of your because at the height of your career because um, I I know I think I would be like that um, but did, was there some sort of paranoia that came with being um, being famous and, and a lot of people knowing you? Yeah, sometimes you do because you got greedy individuals. You know, they sit and they plot and they scheme and etc. So you got to watch who you're around. Got to watch your huddle. You know what I mean? And you know, just a part of it. You know, at one time it thought to seem like it seemed like people just aimed their famous individuals and rappers at one time and that you know, that how you how your antennas up at time. You gotta be cautious. Yeah. yeah. We gotta know who you're around basically. My producer Still wants to ask you a question. Uh, the, yeah. the the report said that uh, that the, that he just went to the store real quick to help his homie out to pick him up with some clothes because that's why he have security or that's why he didn't have his entourage that he normally has with them. And nowadays mm-hmm. rappers have to walk around with a heavy amount of security and either pay their homies or pay a company for that. Did you guys have to deal with that back in the days? Yeah, at times we at times of course no, if like we was out of town or some something like that, you gotta roll with somebody who you know gonna roll with you to the end, basically. Because you got the scavengers, the scavengers out there that, you know, got to keep your antennas up. And I, I do remember that. I do remember a lot of security at times. And then sometimes when you secure it up like that and you move away, people think that you're selling out and et cetera. It's not that you're selling out, you love them, but sometimes you got to love from a distance. Yeah. Yeah, man. That's real talk, dude. That's how it is. Like crabs in a bucket, you know what they say about the crabs in a bucket. Yeah, just fighting each other to, to make it to the top, man. 
Exactly. Yeah, it's a fucked up situation. Yeah. May he rest in peace. It was a horrible, horrible day for hip hop. I'm, I'm in my early 40s, so I remember what it was like when Pac died, and I, I cried. I ain't lying. I was at a Taco Bell, and and I just t- turned on the radio, and 92.3 to beat said Tupac died and I was getting my taco as they told me that and I fucking broke down and the lady was probably looking at me like what the hell is wrong with this guy but you know what homie I, I, I felt the same exact way on Sunday when that shit happened dude yeah. same fucking yeah. way